A few folks are shown working in a field at the start of the film. William's father Trywell is one of them. John, Trywell's older brother, collapses and dies while everyone is busy harvesting the crops. John's funeral is shown in the next scene, during which a priest is preaching to the mourners. Soon, this sermon transforms into a eulogy in which the father seeks to elevate the status of the deceased person while he was still alive. Additionally, he informs everyone that Trywell and John arrived in this land 20 years ago and they planted the crops that the next generations will devour. Everyone is in a dejected mood as he thanks them both. Meanwhile, a few oddly attired individuals arrive on the scene. They were dancing and hooting while singing. Furthermore, despite the fact that one of their loved ones has just passed away, everyone started playing beam and enjoying themselves. The family of Trywell comes next. He resides in a little house with his wife and three children. Trywell works as a farmer to make a living. William, his brilliant son, is repairing a radio that Trywell gave him to fix. Later, Trywell arrives and retrieves a fully fixed radio. He tells William to scale their home's roof so that they can relocate the antenna. A man named Mr. Bamusey arrived as William was following instructions given by his father. Bamusey has given William his radio to fix which he hasn't gotten back yet. William responds by saying that he would soon fix the radio. Moments later, William's mother tells him to take a shower. As he exits the bathroom, he discovers his school outfit laying on his bed. On seeing this, he becomes really thrilled. As he steps outside while wearing the uniform, everyone becomes overly happy and pleased. Then William with his pal goes to the school for the first time. In the following scene, Trywald is standing with a man in the market and tells him that he has heard on the radio this morning that their community may experience flooding. William's sister Annie visits her mother and tells her about how one of her friends recently received an amazing job in a store's agricultural section. After hearing this, her mother tells her that Annie will do much better in life and that she has faith on her. On the other hand, we find a political party agitating the public and pressuring them to vote for them. When Trivel sees this, he curses them because all they do is raise a fuss while doing nothing to help the populace. In addition, William's school's math teacher Ketchagundit is close with Trywell's daughter Annie. Later on that day, the school's principal makes an announcement in front of every student that those who haven't paid the fee won't receive library cards. As soon as Annie's friend exits the store, she dashes over to take her place. However, the store owner informs her that they won't require employees for some time. She is left in a state of utter hopelessness as she tries to understand the kind of life she is living in silence. In the following scene, Ketchagunda tells William that failing to pay his fees will result in expulsion from the school. William is saddened by it, but he is powerless to change it. Trywell is working alone in the field later that evening when there is a severe downpour in the village. When William's mother arrives and asks him to help his father, he responds that he needs to study hard because he has a science test tomorrow. He performs acceptable on his test the following morning, earning a score of 60%. After seeing this, he goes to a junkyard with a friend and their dog to collect trash so he can create a bulb in order to study at night. In the following scene, Trywell is also present in the conference as William enters. There are two men who have entered the village from outside and are pleading with residents to allow them to cut down their trees in exchange for money. Bamusi, the local chief, advises against it since doing so will result in successive droughts and floods. The offer convinces Jeremiah, Trowell's nephew, and he ultimately sells his trees. Following this, other people begin to follow his suit. Trowell makes unsuccessful attempts to halt them. He visits Jeremiah later that day and informs him that the village next to them experienced flooding as a result of selling their trees as well. Jeremiah replies that he did it because he needed the cash. Trowell tells him that if he gives up gambling, all of his money problems will be solved. In the following scene, William is shown standing on a dune, watching a strangely attired tribal dancer who is visibly upset since his house in the trees was being torn down. The foreigners were cutting down these trees. William feels sorry for the man because of it. A bird is caught by William, and he brings it to his friend's home. While they were all listening to the radio of a soccer match, the radio's battery dies. William decided to visit his home and take his own batteries. While he was taking the batteries, he asks his father to pay his school fee. His father responds, once he reaps what he has sown, he will undoubtedly pay it. William doesn't argue and leaves. When he got to his friend's house and put the batteries in the radio, it started up instantly. They sang along to various tunes while dancing. 
William was on his way home after enjoying himself with his pals, when he spotted his sister with his math teacher. The following morning, he and his companion investigate how Kachigunda's cycle functions. He is shocked to discover a lightless bulb that has been fixed in the cycle. He is quite fascinated and excited by it. Later that evening, William overheard his father telling his mother that they were currently unable to pay William's school fee. He silently leaves without informing anyone. William is expelled from school the very following morning. Later that evening, while Trammell is toiling in his fields and dealing with heavy rain, we find him covered in mud. Everything has already been ruined. Nothing is left to appropriately sustain life. Trywell takes William with him to an auction house after observing this in order to meet a friend, Daniel. Trywell informs him that he intends to use his savings to purchase some trees. Daniel answers that your village would experience terrible drought following floods, and that the government won't assist you, since they are more concerned with an invasion that occurred in America. They return home in this manner without receiving any assistance. Now that summer has arrived, everything, including the fields, is completely drawn out. Tribal meets Banyusi, who is in charge of the entire community, after discovering that his entire property has turned barren. Upon the president's arrival in their rural area, Tribal requests that he bring up this matter in front of him. By stating that it would be improper to burden the president, he rejects the proposal. Tribal informs him that this is the only way to prevent the unimaginable hunger that the villagers may experience in the future. Finally, he concedes. In contrast, William enters his class undetected and queries Kachigunda about how his bicycle manages to operate its headlight without the use of energy. He is informed by Kachigunda that Dynamo is responsible for making all of this possible. In addition, he explains to William the concept of friction in order to explain what a dynamo is. Moreover, he explains that it is simple to obtain from the training facility, but William doesn't have much money. When he asks the teacher how to prepare it, Kachigamba is also at a loss for words. William then threatens to reveal his relationship with his sister unless he takes him to the school library. He is taken to the library by Kachigunda, where he finds a book on energy. He reads it in order to come up with something useful for the residents of his community. The president has arrived in the village in the following scene. He meets Pamusi, who informs him of their issues. When a secretary of the president learns this, they drags Bamusi to a corner and beat the life out of him. In the meantime, someone begins to fire, and everyone started to flee, making a commotion. Bamusi is carried home after suffering serious injuries. William is informed by Tribal that no one will come to their aid. Now that the time for harvesting has come, Tribal discovers that they are out of food and that the crops they have picked will barely be enough to feed them for two months. He then chooses to sell the tin off of his roof. He visits the market, where he learns that the current administration has assured the world that there is no food scarcity in the villages. Additionally, as a result of the market's increasing prices, Triwell becomes quite agitated. To express his frustration, he attends a rally for an opposing party. The next scene has Kachigunda and Annie discussing their impending elopement. He is informed by Annie that she cannot abandon her family in this manner by fleeing. However, the principal enters the room and belittles William for not making his payments. William sobs a lot because he feels ashamed. When he gets home, his mother instructs him to go after the food delivery trucks and acquire something to eat for the family. In front of William's defenseless mother and sister, some people break into his home while he is away. Every edible was stolen and William's mother sobbed uncontrollably as a result. William uses his skills to enter the camp and obtain some food for his family. Eventually, Tribal learns about the robbery through his wife. Later that evening, Tribal tells his family they can no longer have more than one meal per day. As a result, Annie acts inappropriately towards her mother. Her mother immediately cuddles her after slapping her. The following part of the film shows starvation. William visits Annie and informs her of his knowledge of her relationship with Kachigunda. He then requests that she give him the dynamo from Kachigunda's cycle. He claims that he can quickly fix the village water problem by employing that dynamo. William arrives home the following morning to find his mother sobbing hysterically while holding a piece of paper. It is Annie's farewell note. William laments a lot, and when he enters her room, he finds Dynamo sitting on the desk. He experiences both happiness and sadness as a result. A few days later, William visits his friend and attaches the Dynamo to a radio there. He then fastens it using a miniature windmill. The radio starts to pick up signals when the fan starts to spin. For him and his pals, this was a tremendous success. So, 
Everyone begins collecting items from the junkyard in order to construct a large windmill. Triwell is extremely saddened by Banyusi's serious illness. While Triwell was at work one day, William approached him and showed him the experiment before asking for one of his cycle's tires. Triwell is annoyed by this request since he believes William is creating a toy for his own amusement, out of which his cycle will be utterly wasted. William is reprimanded by him and forced to assist him. William's pals return the following day and make the same request to Triwell. He protests once more and is indignant. He is then informed by his wife that her parents had passed away. Because she was no longer with Annie, she broke down in tears. William, on the other hand, tears bitterly because he lost his dog to hunger. This helps Triwell realize that he needs to support his son. Everyone in the village pitches in to assist them, and when they are finished, William attaches a motor to a windmill and drops its pipes into a well to serve as a suction device. They all hold off till the battery is fully charged. When water finally begins to flow from the pipes into the fields, everyone is ecstatic. The farm is covered in vegetation after a few days, but Bamusi passes away. The same folks that danced at John's burial came here to cheer up the crowd during their difficult times. William is on his windmill towards the movie's climax, looking around at all the life and greenery. The real William is displayed once the movie ends and the screen goes black. After this amazing invention, he was given a scholarship to complete his education in Malawi. Additionally, he went to the South African Leadership Academy. Moreover, he continued on to Dartmouth College in the USA from there. The film finishes with the lovely proverb, God is as the wind, which touches everything. Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.